Hello and welcome to Aqua Away Days presented by Skybet. I'm Liam McDevitt and today I'm joined by Leonie Carpenter and Statman Dave. Guys, how are we doing? Very, very good. Got some good stats for the championship, so I'm excited to get involved. Well, your stat bar is very high, <laughs> so I'm expecting it to be equally as high today. Leonie, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm excited for your stats, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> We're no pressure. No pressure um, at all. <laughs> so I'm excited to be here. It's a beautiful studio as well, and uh, it's good to be in your company. Well, look, we've been tasked to pick three teams to back ahead of tomorrow's final round of fixtures in the Skybet Championship. These selections will then form a three-way accumulator bet. Which is a, it's a big task. It is big, a lot of pressure, but I think we'll right. we get a job done. Well, look, we'll get to that shortly. Championship. What a league. Always so competitive. What are our memories of the championship? I think that you've always got that. The playoff final's a big one, isn't it? The kind of the multi-million pound game that's always so, so exciting. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you get some really good goals, sometimes it's a little bit flat. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Leicester, so I feel like the championship is Leicester's. I mean, they won it eight times now, um, gone ahead of City in the record. So I'll never forget, I was living at home at the time, 2013, semi-final, second leg against Watford. What a game that was. Like, I'm still picking my jewel up <laughs> off the floor. Um, obviously, Knockhart getting that penalty and the save, the double save, and then Troy Deeney smashing it in to, to get them to the playoff final. I was with my brother in the kitchen. He's a big Leicester fan and... He was devastated. <laughs> and saying that, Dave, you might actually have a, you actually know the answer to this. So, not to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the but. spot. I'm from Reading, which for a while was a big championship yo yo team. Are they a team that's gone up and down the most in the Premier League era? No, unfortunately not. I knew Close. You'd, I knew you'd but, know this. You know, we know these know things. This. Leicester City and Birmingham City have had the most promotions and relegations from the top flight with 12. Wow, surprisingly, actually, I was see. I thought I'd get you with that one today. In the, <laughs> on my journey over, I thought Stat Bennett, I'm going to get him with a with a rogue Reading question, and you've delivered, which is gutting, actually. If you call yourself Stat Bennett, okay, you, right. I, I would yep. like to think potentially you will know. Mm. You can kick me. Under no, there's the table five after. players in the championship that have created over 100 chances this season, which is the first time that's ever happened. So he's ready. He's I locked mean, and loaded. But it wasn't the question. I was going to oh, say that. It wasn't the fair. question I needed an answer to. <laughs> Usually, it's actually Red Sox to get relegated the most. Is that a fact? That no, true? no, sorry, that's oh. all right, guys. I can't. I can't Don't mess with me like that. I'd have been. I'd have been in the pub later. That's my telling people. Are you on that? Just a few weeks ago, we were talking about four teams that could potentially win the title. So obviously, it's been decided. Gone yes. back to your your home in 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 Leicester. But yeah. what a season! What have we we made of the championship this year? It's been unbelievable. I mean, I thought Leicester were running away with it at one point, and it looked like they were. And and then all of a sudden, you've got Southampton, you've got um, Leeds as well in the mix, and then Ipswich just from nowhere. And now, I mean, it looks like tomorrow they're going to finish second. So. It's been unbelievable. I think the other thing with the championship this season, we've got four teams that have got 80 plus points. That's the first time that's happened in the championship. And I think that's why it's been such a good season is the kind of competitiveness mm -hmm. at the top of the league, in the middle of the league and the bottom of the league. There's so many teams like mid-table that have been really good. You know, Coventry City are a great example of that great footballing team, but they're not kind of in it at the end of the year. I could say, I, I know a lot of people from Leicester and even they were like, we're, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. And then within a blink of an eye, they've done it. And um, I messaged one of my friends and just said, like, congratulations after the Leeds QPR game. Like, well done on the promotion. And he texts back and said, yeah, we just went out to put the bins out. And, <laughs> and now here we are. And, I mean, that's that's how it feels. And I think Leicester had that expectation anyway of, of, of winning the championship or at least getting promoted. But the way it's all unfolded, I mean, it's been insane. That'll be a big Leicester promotion party, which I'm looking forward to because we get to see a few more Jamie Vardy scenes. I loved his, uh, I loved his belly slide the other day. I'd oh, give brilliant. it a, a big 10 out of 10. But final day of the season, Skybet Championships. Two teams fighting for automatic promotion, three teams fighting to make playoffs, and five are fighting to stay in the division. It, it never disappoints, does it? You're just on the edge of your seat, even if you don't support one of those teams. I mean, I'm a Chelsea fan for my sins, but, you know, I've... I've seen Leicester do what they've done over the years and like we say this season in particular I, I couldn't take my eyes off it when Chelsea couldn't pick up points for you looking at any different away days for, <laughs> for next season they're never going to do you know what that, that's so. why I'm, I'm actually really pleased that Leicester are back in because a it's a hell of an away day King Power um but also Chelsea historically do quite well at the King Power so we welcome <laughs> Leicester back <laughs> 
Let's take a look at the current standings then. And as you can see, Leicester are officially champions after their 3-0 win at Preston on Monday night. Ipswich also took a giant leap towards the Premier League following their hard-fought victory over Coventry the following day. Leeds will still be hoping for a final day miracle to make the second automatic promotion place, while Southampton will be looking to build towards the playoffs. Hull City have an outside shot of making the playoffs, but they will be relying on the results to go their way. Towards the bottom, it's a real scrap for survival as Birmingham, Plymouth, Sheffield Wednesday and Blackburn all need positive results while Huddersfield really do need a miracle. So that Leicester have won back promotion to the Premier League. It's going to be a, a big night here at the King Power. They'll be wanting to, to sign the season off in, in style. Uh, the fight for the second automatic promotion play still to be decided. Ipswich will be going into that against Huddersfield. They'll be looking to confirm their place back in the Premier League. It's been a long time coming for Ipswich. It really has. And I think it's 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 a team that's taken some time to get going, but now they've found that. Um, I think they spend the most time in the Championship versus any other side before the relegation to League One. And I think the interesting side with them is they've scored the most goals in the Championship, you know, with 90. But they don't necessarily have a top goal scorer in a sense of nobody's got over 13 goals. So they're spread through the team. There's loads of different ways that Ipswich can get you. They've scored the second most goals from corners, which is which is obviously a good thing. You think, look at the two forwards, uh, Hurst and, and Kiefer Moore that was brought in in January. There's two players there that are kind of old school target men, but Ipswich play possession football and it's a really nice way to maybe get around the press. And it's exciting. Um, you know, we saw Amari Hutchinson absolutely run riot recently and he's a player with big, big talent. <laughs> And exciting excitement. And I think that's what McKenna's kind of done there. They play with wingers, they play with width, they play with creativity. There's loads of options to score goals and, and they, they attack. So there's so much to like about them uh, to see them back in the Premier League, but they've had a great season in the Championship. I think sometimes it's easy to, to forget the the carrot of the of the Premier League. Obviously, it's the pinnacle. I went and spoke to Connor Chaplin earlier in the season and it was almost like this is his last last go at getting into the Premier League and how much do you think that pressure will, will be on players like that going into this this final day of the season? I think again back to McKenna as well he instills this calmness and this coolness within the team and there's been no kind of pressure no stress it's all been let's play our football and let's get it done and big shout out to Amari Hutchinson as well who I uh, followed in uh, the youth at Chelsea and I'm very proud of him. So uh, Leonie Carpenter scouting report, big, <laughs> big, big future for Amari Hutchinson. But he's performing, and, and that's a that's a big jump from where he'd been playing to 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 be performing week in week out in the championship. And the other game, Leeds versus Southampton. I'm looking forward to that one. I've got most of my family are Southampton fans, and all year they've been saying we're going to get back in the Premier League. But it's a big pressure game for both Leeds and Southampton. It is big, and I think with with what we've seen with Southampton is they control the tempo. They love possession, 66% possession average this season. They are very Guardiola-esque in a sense. They do use the fullbacks inside, very different to Ipswich Town. And I think that's like a really nice stylistically match up to Leeds United, who I mentioned before, they're a basketball team. Times they leave three forwards up and they'll defend with eight, seven bodies and then they'll counter-attack. And you look at Crescencio, Somerville, I'll get that out properly, uh, 19 goals in the championship, nine assists. Well, there will be goals in this game. I don't know which way it's going to go. I think it could well be a draw, but um, it's an exciting fixture for a final day. It's so close, but... Who do you think? You think Hull have got a chance maybe to sneak into those playoff spots? I think they played really good football. Uh, Liam Rossini is a really, really good coach. I think the fluidity of, of how they attack and they get bodies around the ball, it's great to watch. Obviously, they've got some you know, Turkish influence in that midfield, but Fabio Cavallio has been a big player for them. Um, you know, there are a lot of people talk about them not playing with a striker. He's basically their, their nine at times and, and he moves really well. He attacks the near post well. And he's been a great signing for them. You know, in January, he'd been brought in. But you look at that team, it feels more like a Premier League team than maybe a West Brom. So who do you think, which teams do you think people will be wanting to avoid? I think all the teams are very, very strong in their different ways. Uh, you know, even West Brom with Carlos Corberan, they've got a way of beating people. They've got a way of you know, in a, in a tactical sense, overloading the opposition in, in certain areas. But I think Leeds are the team to avoid. Just by sheer goals, sheer attacking potential. Now, we've spoken about Hull a bit. There will be phones being checked in this stadium because they need West Brom or Norwich to lose and they have to win to, to get into those playoff spots. That's one of my favourite things at the end of the season is everyone on the phone. You know, there are old school ones where someone's on the radio yeah, and I want to see all of, all of that stuff. I, I've got a message... Oh, for the people who do the fake cheering. Yeah, okay. Ooh. There's something wrong with you people. Because <laughs> that <laughs> is unacceptable and it's incredibly unfair. Yeah, so it could be a nerve-wracking day for the for the whole fans and equally as nerve-wracking at the bottom of the table. Birmingham, what a mad season they've had. No, absolutely. And, you know, they 
they don't look like they're going to stay up, to be honest. Um, of course, they got Norwich tomorrow, which is going to be a really tough game. And I think looking at Norwich as well, when you look at sort of the playoff places and um, those that are in contention for the playoffs, Norwich seems to be the most consistent team at the moment. Obviously, Southampton have gone off the boil, losing three games. Leeds got absolutely smashed by QPR. So this is probably not a good time to play Norwich either. So I do feel for Birmingham. Um, I don't think they're going to do it though. I guess Rotherham, Re relegation yeah. confirmed. How do you think players manage that, knowing that they're going to be in League One next season? That is a, it's a really difficult thing, right? Championship has got so many different styles as League One. Going to be maybe more physical in there. I know as a former player, you probably know better than we do. Never had a relegation, just putting it out there, <laughs> so I can't relate. But, uh, <laughs> um, tough run for, for Rotherham and Huddersfield Town as well. That's a, it's, a, it's a big loss to the Championship, I think, Huddersfield. Yeah, definitely. And I think they've got a tough ask tomorrow against Ipswich. I don't think they're going to do it. No. Sorry. I just... Blackburn, you'd like to think they're safe, but incredible. Last day of the season, so many teams looking over their shoulder checking results. Yeah, I mean, arguably they've probably got the toughest fixture with Leicester going for that 100 points as well. It's just the beauty of the championship again. It's, it's looking over your shoulder. It's thinking, are we safe or are we not? The permutations as well, I guess. Sheffield Wednesday's goal difference is, is awful and that could play a, a big part. I think, you know, Blackburn, for example, in this group, you know, having the league top scorer in Sammy Smodix with 25 goals in the championship, that's important. That can get them somewhere. Sheffield Wednesday as well, big result. Can they do it again defensively? Huddersfield Town as well, I don't think they've got enough. I think they're, they're a team that probably down is what, a 16 goal swing in, from a goal difference perspective. So th there is teams that are probably a little bit Overworried in a sense that should be okay. So these are the final day fixtures. Can't tell you how excited I am. I don't even know which game you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna tune into and watch, but an incredible final day to the the championship. No, for sure. And this is kind of what we want. What's your pick of the bunch? I'm gonna go with Ipswich. There's an anticipation there for a celebration, and it could just explode. I expect that to be the one that'll be electric. I'll go for Leeds Southampton. I think that's got the makings of a, a, a goal fest. I think Leeds, with the result against QPR, they have got a lot to prove. But I think in terms of sort of the playoffs, if Leeds do make the playoff places, which it looks like they might, historically, they don't do well in the playoffs. So this could almost be the first game to sort of build that confidence, build that momentum. We've looked at it in detail, but now it's, it's the big questions. You've got to put your, your money where your mouth is. Who do you think is going to sneak into that automatic promotion spot? It's got to be Ipswich. And I'm 99% confident. I think I'm going to go with, with Ipswich as well. Such a well-run club from, from top to bottom. And I think they've got a real togetherness in that group that I think will just about get them over, over the line. So then into the, into the playoffs, are there going to be any final day surprises? You mentioned it, whole city, can they do it? Who do you think uh, the, the playoff teams are going to be? I feel like I'm going to be really boring now, but I did, <laughs> I did write my predictions down. Um, I and thought you were going to say I did right. I'm really boring in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> um, so I've gone Leeds, Southampton, Norwich, West Brom. I don't think Hull are going to do it. I think they'll they'll give it a good go, but I think the goal difference and I think West Brom. I think they'll I think they'll draw their game, which will be enough. I'm going to go Hull. I think Hull will sneak into the playoffs. I think they're they're one of the form sides in the league, and I think there's enough there for them to score a few goals gain some momentum in that and then hit the playoffs in, in good form. Yeah, I'm going to go with Hull just for one time for Fabio Cavallio. Because well, you don't want him, to be boring as I well. I would love him to do it. I didn't bring boring in my notebook. <laughs> otherwise, I'd have, stuck, I'd have stuck with the answer. But uh, yeah, Hull, Fabio Cavallio, Tyler Morton, sticking with my red men. I think. Uh, also think the West Brom game is maybe slightly more difficult than, than Hull Plymouth. So I think, yeah, Hull final day scenes mm. are going to sneak into the playoffs. Well, let's see them, man. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> I'll be on my own in the corner with West Brom. I'm not boring. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've asked the big questions at the top end. Also need it for the bottom end of the Skybet Championship. Who's going to get Renegades? I think it's going to be Huddersfield Town and Birmingham City. Yeah, and without copying, I am going to copy. That's great. <laughs> um, as I've mentioned, I don't think Huddersfield are going to get a result. I think, I think they'll be going down. Um, along with Birmingham City as well. Birmingham had the makings of a good season. It's just it's just not worked for them. So I think that both of those will be going down. Yeah, I'm going to hop on the, the Birmingham City relegation bandwagon as well. And I think it will be Birmingham, Huddersfield and Rotherham who will be playing football in League One next season. Right, guys, now is the business time 
of the day. We're going to be placing a three-way accumulator with each of us back in a winner on the final day of the season. And we're all going to be going to watch a match tomorrow. Final day of the season championship. We're all going to be at a game. Good stuff. I'm up for it. It's exciting. Now look, Dave, are you, would you like to have a little bet? A little one, yeah. A little yeah. flutter. You know, back a few teams in an accumulator, always fun. You know, a little bit different as well. You, you're supporting teams that maybe you're never going to support in your life. Yeah, the only... I don't think Boxing Day is complete without a Boxing Day outcome. <laughs> oh my God. I yeah. was, I was go. literally just about to say, Boxing Day, yeah. I place yeah. there's, the same there's three bet things every... on Boxing yeah. Day. Leftover turkey. Yeah. Indigestion, yeah. Boxing Day Acker. <laughs> in which order? Which order, do, which order does your Boxing the, Day the go? Indigestion is always there, unfortunately. <laughs> um, right, should we take a look at the final fixtures of this year's Skybet Championship? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, look at these. Some massive, massive games. I know we've touched on them before, but what's the pick of the bunch? Do you know what? Let's go for a Rotherham win. Why not? You know, let's give them something to go out and celebrate with. So, you know, I think that's a nice fixture to look at and go, go on, lads, just just do it for the fans. Cardiff City, though, most goals in the championship from Cardiff with 17. With so, I'd, I'd hold on, guys. Look, we need the stats in here to, to help us pick the perfect hacker. So, at Rotherham, we're going to go with, I'll probably go Cardiff City in that game. That's what, that's what we're... <laughs> Imagine trying to argue with this fella about. See, I'm, I'm doing it with my emotions. Mm. You're just doing it with boring. cold, hard facts. Very boring, I am. <laughs> but so now I'm stuck with two boring people. I've got the only boring notepad and boring yeah. stats over here. Sorry, man. Um, I don't know. I like the look of Leeds Southampton as a game. Most of my family are Saints fans, actually. So I know the, the family chat's already been bubbling about how big that game is. So I'm going to put it out there. Southampton win. They, they get my vote for that, for that game. Leonie, what do you think? Do you know what? I'm going to let you have that one. Yeah. I quite fancy Leicester Blackburn. I think I'm owed after the Chelsea season a bit of celebration and um, quite like the idea of a promotion party. If they get 100 points as well, it's good times all round. So I'll take one for the team, guys. I'll do the party game. Leonie just wants to trip home, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not Can't great. Can't your mum's brew. <laughs> Dave, what about you? No, I like both those bets. Just the Southampton one. Adam Armstrong's a, a man in, in form this season. 20 goals, 13 assists. The only player to be over 30 goal, in, goal involvement. So I like that. It's going to boost our odds a little bit, I think, that one. That's kind of one of those ones to grow numbers. what we're doing here. Get the numbers in. And again, Guy Leicester... doesn't switch off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Leicester City on the other side, again, you'd expect them. They've got enough quality yeah. in that squad. Actually, if you look at their wage spend per week, it's 1.1 million and that put them around 15th in the Premier League. And I think we can't look past Ipswich Town. I think we've spoken about them enough. Cool. So at Acker, we've got Ipswich 2-9, to nine, Southampton 9-2, to two, extending the odds a little bit, and Leicester at 3-5, to five, which brings the treble out at 9.27. Should we lock it in? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Big final day of the Championship. Place bet. We're in. I'm confident. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a, it's a good Acker. Well, a big day tomorrow. I'll give you both a call just to check in on the Acker and maybe soak up some atmosphere from, from the different grounds. I might answer that one, but we'll see. I might be celebrating too much. It's going to be a party atmosphere at Leicester, so... Too busy to pick up the phone. Too <laughs> busy. We need the updates. That's Some... what we need. The updates for the Acker. That's the most important thing. Someone's second team's got from home, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so bored of Chelsea losing. She can't answer the phone to us for Leicester, eh? Um, Dave, Leone, thanks so much. You got me even more excited for the final day of the Skybet Championship than I was before. Make sure you keep an eye out for our Match Day Experience episode coming next week. We'll see you all soon.